Woohoo! Today we're doing adding vectors. So in class we talked about what a vector is and we talked about the angles and different ways to name it. So right now we're going to take a few minutes and talk about how we add vectors together. You already know how to add a scalar number together. You add 3 and 4 and you get 7. All right, so you know how to do scalars already. Vectors is slightly different and you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, today we're just going to be adding vectors graphically or pictorially. Okay, we're not going to do it quite mathematically yet because we still want to learn a couple of things before we do that. Okay, so let's look first at vector A and vector B. Let's add those two together. So I've got vector A, which is 4 centimeters at 0 degrees. Okay, so when I add vectors, I'm going to use a method called the head to tail vector, which means that I draw the first vector, which is 4 centimeters at 0 degrees. So there we go. So there's vector A. Now head to tail means that you put the head of the first vector with the tail of the second one. And so that means when I add vector B on, I'm just going to add vector B, put its tail at the head of vector A, and add right there. Since they're both in the same direction, essentially that just creates a straight line. Now what that creates is what we call the resultant vector. Okay, now the resultant vector will go from the very beginning of the first one to the very end of the last one. Alright, so it looks like this. And so obviously since this one was 4 centimeters and that was 3 and they're in a straight line, my resultant vector is going to be 7 centimeters at 0 degrees. Okay? So secondly, let's uh, look at another example. Let's look at vector A plus vector C. Okay, so let's go back to our red pen. For, so first we'll go ahead and draw vector A. So here we go, 4 centimeters for vector A. Now vector C is 5 centimeters back in the other direction. So remember we want to put the head on the tail. So the head of the vector will match up with the tail of vector C, which is then going to be 5 centimeters back in this direction. Okay, so vector A was 4 centimeters at 0 degrees, and vector C was 5 centimeters at 180 degrees. Now most of you can tell without measuring that that means that I'm one centimeter to the left or at 180 degrees of where I originally was. So my resultant vector is going to be one centimeter at 180 degrees. Okay, now note that I started my resultant vector where I started vector A. And then I went through, drew vector A, drew vector C, and the resultant vector ends at the point where vector C ends. And so again, this part is not drawn head to tail. Head to tail is the addition, head to tail, and we put those together. All right? So those are straight lines all along the x-axis in the horizontal direction. So let's look at one that doesn't have it in, in that direction. All right? So let's look at B and D. So let's add those two together. So we'll start off again by drawing vector B. So there we go. Vector B is 3 centimeters at 0 degrees. Okay, now vector D is 5 centimeters at 30 degrees. Okay, now that means that from the head of B, I'm going to put the tail of D, head to tail, and then continue at 30 degrees. So when I do this, I'm going to want to use a protractor or something since I'm doing it visually and I want to make sure that I do it correctly. All right, so I've got my protractor here, and so I'm going to make sure that my angle goes off at 30 degrees. You won't be able to see my protractor because I don't have uh, one online on my computer yet. But there's 30 degrees starting from here. So now we'll draw 5 centimeters, which just happens to be right there. Okay, so 30 degrees right there. So that's vector D. All right, now my resultant vector, again, is going to start where I started with vector B and end where I ended with vector D. Now, for the time being, we're just going to do this graphically or visually. So we're going to start here and go up to where it ends, which just so happens to be 7.9 centimeters. And if I take my protractor, which again, I apologize, you can't see and measure it, it is at 20, 
21 degrees. So at 21 degrees. And so that's my resultant vector for B and D. All right, let's do one more. Let's add D and E. Neither of these are straight and flat. All right, well, they're straight. They're just not flat along the x-axis. So let's add D and E together. Okay, so we'll start with D, which again needs to, we're going to start it right here. So just so that I make sure that I get a real 30 degree angle, that right there is 30 degrees. So I'm going to go up at 30 degrees, 5 centimeters. So start here, go up 5. All right, so that's my vector D right there. All right, then I'm going to add on vector E which is 70 degrees south of west. Okay, so when I go and do my vector here, so 70 degrees south of west is down in this direction if I'm starting at the point of my arrow, so it's down kind of in that direction right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get 3 centimeters from there, and we'll draw vector E, which is going to start here, and one, two, three centimeters right there. So there's vector E. Note that it's not 70 degrees from D, it's 70 degrees from here. If you measure this angle right here, that is 70 degrees south of west. The direction of my vector doesn't change just because I'm adding it onto another vector. Okay, so we have head to tail. Now we can measure. And it looks like it's going down just a little bit. So there's my resultant vector, which is 3.4 centimeters. And then I need to measure the angle, which will go out here. We'll use our protractor. And it looks like my angle is about 5 degrees. So I'm going to say at negative 5 degrees. All right, so there we go. We've added them together graphically. You can use your protractor to measure the angles and your ruler to measure the length of the resultant vectors. And at some future time, I will teach you how to do it mathematically. So good luck.